So today we're going to be looking at my tool bag, what tools I've got in there, which ones I'd recommend and the actual bag that I use itself. So it's a Velocity Rogue 9.0. I've had it now about nine months or like that. And I've been getting along with it quite well. Now the reason I chose this one is the size. Now you can get smaller ones, but I wanted a bag that's got everything in there. So I know when I pick this up, take it into the job, I've got everything in there ready to go. So let's take a look at what storage you get in there. Let's just unclip the top. Now you've got two zips, one on the back here, one on the front here. Lift that up, there we go. This is the storage at the front for all your screwdrivers, spanners, grips, stuff like that. Two storage pages at the top, just there. And you've got a compartment here as well. That does actually come out if you want it to come out. So you can store stuff in the top there. you got compartments on the sides. we just have a look here. You've got two either side and a big one there. And round the other side, you've got the same as well. You've got smaller ones there that you can put screwdrivers in if you want to. And if we look at the opposite side, this is where I keep all my test equipment. So three pockets at the front here are padded. So it'll stop your screens getting scratched, stuff like that. Two more storage compartments here. Big storage compartment there with a Velcro strap on. Zip compartment there. You can put stuff in there. It's a little bit tight though to get stuff in. I've actually got something in there. Free on fuses, don't know how I had them. So yeah, you keep stuff in there. Now, if we take a look, you can actually carry this. There's a few options. So you've got a handle here, which clips onto there. So you can pick it up like that. You've got the shoulder strap, or you can put it on like that, over your shoulder. Also, you did get an option when this comes as a backpack. Let me just show you that. So there's like this Velcro strap in there, you basically pad it against your back. That was on there. Then you got these two straps just went on so you'd have it like a backpack but that is not for me really isn't no offense if you use the backpack but to be honest with you i don't want to walk into someone else looking like the door of the explorer just turned up so it ain't for me and say so that on your back as well very bulky so then come straight off so it's got a nice hard base nice and durable it's solid really solidly made it, it just feels and looks nice that's the right reason i chose this so I haven't been disappointed with it. It's just the size. It is big and bulky. But like I said, I want something that's got everything in there. So that's the Velocity Rogue 9.0. I said, when I pick this up, I know I've got everything in there ready to start my work. Let's take a look at the actual tools that I'll put in here. Let's start off with the fundamentals. Spanners. Now, start off with this one, the Nervad Stubby. That opens up actually to fit pump unions. That's the reason I bought this pump unit. It's nice and small, so you can get in tight spaces. And Nervad actually designed that so you can hit it with an hammer. They say it will withstand a hammer blow. So that is really handy for pump unions. Next up, we've got these two spanners here. That's a Monument one, and that's a Baker one. Nice and short. I don't want them too long. I don't want big spanners like that. Not when I'm working in boilers, stuff like that. Yeah, nice thin jaws as well. Get into all the tight spaces. So I've got two of them. I've got a smaller Baco one. That's for your smaller nuts and stuff like that. Then I've got one of my favourites, a compression spanner. So you've got one side here. That size 32 mil, which fit 22 mil nuts. This size 24 mil, which fit 15 mil nuts. Paid less than a tenner for that. It's perfect for when you're installing boilers, getting underneath or working on boilers, radiators, stuff like that. It'll just fit perfect straight on. So yeah. That's a really good tool, recommend that one. And I should have a small one as well, a small spanner, but can't find it. Probably somewhere in the van, I don't know, it might turn up, but yeah, them are the spanners that I use. So moving on now, let's take a look at my grips. Now, these are Nipex grips. Nipex, can Nipex? How do you say it? I don't know, I'll say Nipex. So yeah, we've got my big, big Nipex grips. I use them for nearly everything, to be honest with you. Really good, really handy. Get some good leverage of them. The grip is nice and strong, nice and you know, just fitting around. You don't feel like you're going to slip. And the sliding motion, really smooth. Now, I know you can get them with the buttons on. I've just never got along with the button ones. I just like them. 
lock into place. So yeah, I've got a big pair of them. I've got the medium size and I've got the smaller size as well. So yeah, them come as a pack. Um, so I've got another set of these, but I am building and installing bag. So I've got my service and breakdown bag and my installation bag. So I am in the process of doing that. So I've got three Nipex grips. No, I've got my Diddy grips. Look at them. Get small them up. Tiny. So yeah, they are really good for getting to like uh, pilot assemblies, stuff like that. I think I did a video the other week. It was a backseat, one half five or pot turn. Differential valve, the small nuts on top. Use that to get in. So yeah, them are my grips. Let's take a look now at my screwdrivers. We've just changed to a set of Milwaukee screwdrivers. Now, the reason for that is it was on offer. I bought some Milwaukee stuff that come in as an offer. I thought, you know what? Let's give them a try. So I've had them about two, three weeks. And to be fair, they've been they've been fine. They've been, you know, they ain't the best screwdrivers in the world, but they're certainly not the worst. I mean, you've got a big, nice big flat head. And you've got all different size as well. I've got a nice electrical there that'll fit in. And different size flatheads. They are magnetic as well. They have got quite, I was trying to hold it up then, but yeah, they are mag magnetic tips. So they've been fine for the price, to be honest with you. The grip, yeah, it's okay. Not the greatest in the world, but not the worst neither. It ain't soft, but it's got kind of edge, so it kind of fits in your hand quite nice. So I've got all different size posi drives there. Quite a good set that was, to be fair. See so yeah, how many screwdrivers we've got there. We've got 11 screwdrivers there in that set. And we've got that from Screwfix, one of them was on offer. Couple of other screw, screwdrivers we use. Let me just show you them. So we've got the stubby screwdrivers. Now we've got the Milwaukee one that come with the set. And we've got uh, one that I've just had for years. Two stubbies, then we're a must. Electrical screwdriver, but the difference is the top spins like that. So you can actually get in there, put your hand on, twist all that. I do like that one. That's really good electrical. And an old flathead. Now always keep an old flathead because you know what it's like in working away. You just need to get like something out the wall or whatever. What do you go for? You can feel flathead. Now that set I want to keep nice and sharp. So you have one flathead that takes all the brunt, all the damage. Ends up being smoothed off on the edge because you've used it for everything. So yeah, old flathead keeps all the other flatheads nice and sharp. So then some other screwdrivers that we keep in the set. Let's take a look at my Allen key set. Now, this is a weirder one. I've always just bought cheap Allen key sets, you know, the generic ones that you can get. But I kept losing them, they kept falling out, stuff like that. This weirder one has been perfect. Now, it's all colour coded if you want to learn the different colours. But it does say on there the different sizes that you've got. And the storage, I say it folds up, locks into place. Look at that. I say you can pay, I think they were about £30 then was, but I'm glad I got them now. Really good set of Allen keys to keep for adjusting gas valves, taking off pumps, stuff like that. So that's the Weirat Allen key set. Another thing that I keep in there is a good Stanley knife. That's a uni light one. I think when they had the Black Friday deal, I just bought a lot of the stuff, chucked that in there. Yeah, so it, that's actually quite decent to be fair. It's got a good grip on it. Not, it ain't too heavy, it's lightweight, and so it's got a lock in the top there. If you want to store your blades in there, I haven't got no spare blades in there at the moment, but yeah, good Stanley knife, keep it one in there for opening packages and stuff like that, or scraping off silicon. Shouldn't really use that, should really you should use a plastic one, but we all know you should use a Stanley blade, don't you? Or do you? So we've got thin nails pliers, we've got a normal set. And we've got the bent set as well. So if you need to get into some awkward places, them are really good to have. Bent nails pliers and long nails pliers. And say, so look at the age of them. I've had them years. They've been really good. That's a Draper one. And that is a Draper one, both Draper. So yeah. Personal favourite of mine again, oil filter wrench. Now, that is used to open up magma clean filters, stuff like that, or any type of filter. Customers lost the key. You can't get into it. You can try your big nipex, but they won't really fit them fit perfect just come off really easy so yeah really recommend them less than a tenner as well so well worth having in your tool bag Another, a couple of things to keep in there a couple of pens pencils got a permanent marker we have got a pencil but this this is the marksman now what this will do it'll actually shoot a jet of ink through a hole so all you do is put it on the hole it'll shoot through let me just see if i can show it on camera really 
there you go. Marksman pen, used to mark holes, really good. Keep one of them in there. So we've got a ratchet and a 17mm deep socket. Now these are perfect for doing taps. That'll fit over a tap cartridge you can get in there. Now I have got an adapter that'll take that onto my impact driver, which, you know, a bit overkill on the tap to be honest with you. That I've always found has got it off. That just sits in the top of my toolbox. It's a really good one to have. Ratchet, 17mm deep socket. Couple of other things going there. We've got a bolt level that just sits in the side, just in case we need it to level things up. Silicon grease, keep that in there for O-ring, stuff like that. Really handy to have, or waste, keep that in there. And the cleaning brush, that's for boilers and that. Or if you you know need to sweep up the worktop or something where you've been working, it's a nice little cleaning brush in there. Keep it, vault alert as well, a fluke vault alert. We've got one of them in there. So, them are really important to have. Now, you should be doing your dead checks with your multimeter, but that in your bag or in your pocket, just to make sure that stuff ain't live. Now, do that whenever you replace a kitchen tap or something like that before you even touch the stock tap or the tap. Because I have heard a story before, there was a lad, went to do a kitchen tap, went down, touched the stock tap, got a bolt off it. It was actually live, the stock tap was. Use that before, put it over it, and it's showing up like that. He would have known it was live. Again, if you just need to quickly work on something, you should be doing your dead checks anyway, but that, you can just put it over the wire, see if it's live or not. Could save your life one day. Keep one of them in there. That's a bolt pen. So we've got a Jubilee clip. We use that to tighten onto the hose pipe when we're draining down. That's handy to have in there. Gas meter cap. So if we need to take the gas meter out of blanket, we've got a blank in there. And a milk cart on top. What have we got there? Well, that will actually fit perfect onto a gas meter on the top of there. So yeah, we'll just keep one of them in there just in case as a backup. We have got proper caps for the meters, but you know, if you ever fall short, milk cart and bottle top will work perfect. Another thing will work as well. The lid off in an inhibitor bottle. That'll fit on top of a gas meter. How did somebody find that out? Mad aim. Yep, yeah, there were a couple of other things to keep in there. Now let's have a look at my test equipment. Now, we use the Anton Sprint Pro V3. We've had that about two years, but we've been using Anton now for, it's got to be 10 years. We've been using Anton analyzers. We just get on them really well. Good display on them, good battery. Really reliable. We found them to be reliable. So yeah, that's the equipment we use. We use an Anton Pro V3. That sits in the front. And we've got the Pro for the B3. Now that is supposed to think, I think that's supposed to go in the top. I'll show you that in a minute, but I'll show you where we store it in the Vogue 9.0 bag. That's the test equipment for it. Got a fluke meter. That's just for testing electrics and that. Don't have to be anything extravagant for a gas engineer. You just need voltage, DC, voltage, continuity, homes, stuff like that. So you don't need to get mad with a multimeter. That's a fluke multimeter that we keep in there. Some more test equipment we got. We've got a temperature sensor, so you can plug that into my Anton and I can take surface temperatures, water temperatures, stuff like that. We've got the clamps. Again, then we've got flow return, hot and cold pipes when we're commissioning boilers. So them stay in my bag. And we've got the gas sniffer as well. So if we get called out to a gas leak, we've got the gas sniffer in there, which will plug into my Anton. We've got the probes for the multimeter, the pair of gloves. How often do you actually see me wearing gloves in videos though? I should wear them a lot more often, but yeah, keep gloves in there. You should really be using them. Stop your hands from getting cut. This is a good little find that I found. This is for the Worcester, Worcester Junior, stuff like that. It'll actually adjust the gas valve. One side will do the minimum, one side will do the maximum. So yeah, keep that in there. It's a really good tool to have. Tight measure, nothing too fancy. I think I picked this up free at a show. It's got CT1 on it. So yeah, keep tight measuring there. How good of that was a catch? Yeah, keep tape measure in there. Keep a work light on there. Now, this is the Unilight SLR1750. You've probably seen Mark Tiff, Tiffers go on about these. They are really good. I'll be honest with you, I've had it a while and it is so good. So, it's got a base on there, so you can use that to hook on stuff wherever you want. That will actually pull out, so you can hook it on stuff. That's magnetic on there, so you can go anywhere you want. And the battery on it lasts, I think it's got four hours, um, if it's on full brightness four and a half hours something like that it can run longer if it's on the lower brightness but yeah um it's also got like a you can actually plug in your phone to it your phone's low on battery plug your charger in but that stays in our bag 
I've loved having that since I had it. Really good light. So yeah, it is worth the hype. I, I'd recommend that. I think you can get it sometimes for about 50, 60 quid, something like that. But yeah, you need like SLR, 175R, that stays in my bag. And of course, I've got manometer and the holes for the manometer. Now, yes, I can do it from my Anton, but I always keep a manometer. Maybe I'm a little bit too old school. I don't know. I prefer doing a tightness test with a water gauge. Now, the advantage of doing it on the Anton is I can do it digitally. So I can send that off on a certificate, say that I've done the tightness test. But I've just always kept a water gauge. So the water gauge stays on my bag. Last but not least, what should be on there but isn't going on there, unfortunately, is long screwdrivers. Now, that one is nailed. I tried to get a screw out the other day. And it just all rounded off. So that is for the bin, but I am getting some more long nails screwdrivers. So yeah, that one's I've probably had about four years. It's served me well. Really nice grip on it, it was, but yeah, I'm gonna have to get some more. But you want some long screwdrivers in there as well. But yeah, let me show you where I put everything in the bag. So I've just got to put everything in the bag now. I'm gonna start with spanners. Probably can go in that pocket there. And two monuments at the, the baker and the monument at the front. And that bake can go in there. Some spanners come on the right. Three sets of nipex, knipex, whatever you want to call them, can go in the opposite side to there. There we go. That's them in there. The little baby ones will have to go up here so we don't get lost. The Milwaukee screwdriver, so I've got two bigger flatheads on that side there. So I oh know when I go to reach for them, if I'm going on that side, I'm going to be the bigger ones. The biggest flathead goes on the outside there. Same with the posies just next to them. I've got all the others in the front there. And I think I'll cut us and fit just down the back there. The other screwdrivers are stubbies. Then we can go in the top pockets there. And I'll put my Stanley knife just on that side. Two long noses go there. I'll put my other electrical in as well, I forgot earlier. And put my fluke pen just there. So our compression spanner is going to go there. Then the oil filter wrench and fit down the side in that pocket just there. Just in there and all that. We've Allen key set just goes down the back of the screwdriver. Just pull that out because it's in there nicely. So yeah, it's getting in there now. So the brush just goes down inside there. Marksman pen, make sure it's off. I don't want that going everywhere. That just goes in the front there. Then we've got a couple of pens. We've got black, permanent, blue. we have got a pencil that normally goes in there. And that's one that goes across there. That's the Worcester tool. So he just goes in there. The top of here, I normally keep my gloves. Silicon grease, my ratchet with the 17 mil bit, and this is a tape measure. That's near enough. All my tools in there for the front bit. Then let's take a look at the back where I keep the test equipment. The front here, here's your paddy pockets. So this is where all my test equipment goes. Let me just show you what goes in there. Analyzer goes on the left, and I'll put my multimeter in there. Printer, that should fit there. Then my probes go down here. So test equipment's are all there. Now, this is where I keep the probe for the analyzer. It's because I like to keep the top of that free for this type of stuff. But I'm pretty sure, you can see this cap there, just down there. If you take that out, the probe will actually fit down there. Was it designed for that? I don't know. But it would make sense because the probe could fit down there and the boring that could fit in there. But I always get the probe inside there. So yeah, normally put a probe in there and say so whenever I need it, it's just there, analyze the probe. So yeah, and I've got a little pouch here to keep all the other bits in. I can put my unit light in there, but sometimes what I'll do is strap it to the side here, just so I can keep that pocket free. But yeah, you can put it in there. But yeah, that's all the test equipment in the front. So test equipment in the front and tools in the back. These pages at the front, this one right at the front, my gas sniffer goes in there. And that pocket there, I so I'll just put all my loose bits and pieces, got some insulation tape, that tube leaf here, cap, no problem. But I'll never put anything like I wanna put that down there because it'll just get crushed against the pliers and your spanners and that. So I'll just keep that kind of stuff down there. Uh, gas sniff up there. And this page at the front here. That's where I'll keep my manometer holes. Manometer holes goes in there. There we go. Another tool that you won't use, but I will. Selfie stick. I say I use that when I'm filming and that. It's got a little, little tripod attachment. Files up nicely, goes in there. I like film content when I'm on the go. That goes in there. On the side, so I've got manometer. Blunt flathead, sharp flathead. 
little bolt level. Now I could utilize these pockets for some of these screwdrivers in here because it is a bit bulky. Um, so what you could do is take some of these screwdrivers out, pull them aside like your master use ones. You could do that, then that'll shut a little bit better, free up a little bit of space. Just, I might do that, I might have a little shuffle around with this. If I do, I'll put it on the video. Um, but yeah, that's generally my bag set up for this. And then what you're supposed to do is zip up the sides, then that comes over and fastens onto there. I've never done that with this bag ever. Never been able to, to be honest with you, because if you use these two front pouches, it stops that from coming over unless you put barely anything in the front of these. So I'll just leave it like that. That's like an open bit, so I can just chuck stuff in there, like if I finish the job or something, chuck it in there and then put it back after. Another tool that I keep in there is a folding bucket. I forgot to mention this. Yeah, this is a pit bull folding bucket. Just fold that up and that goes in the top of there as well. It's a folding bucket in there, then I'll normally chuck a dust sheet in like that. Yeah, I'll walk into it. That's normally how I walk into a customs area. It's dust sheet on top, handle bag, ready to go. So I've moved some of the screwdrivers to the front just so that closes a lot better. Ah, dust sheet on the top. That is ready to go into a customer's house. And that is a setup that I use every day. Another tool set we've got is this Weira set. We've had this over a year. It's looking a bit bare now though. I've lost the um, screwdriver here. That electrical broke and that electrical broke. Nothing wrong with the set. I was using it for the wrong application. But yeah, this tool set's been pretty good as well. So you've got a 10 and an 8 mil socket there. 13 and 10 mil spanner there, the Weaver Jokers spanners. You've got the adapters in here. Again, I've lost one of them. The extension bar and the 8 mil there. That didn't come with the set. I've added that myself. You've got the different screwdriver adapters at the top. Uh, 13, 10, 7 sockets there. We go into the screwdriver and this is the screwdriver. That's the adapter that goes on the screwdriver. And here is the actual screwdriver. So this is a really good screwdriver. You can angle it. Uh, let me just put one of these on and I'll show you. That's what the screwdriver looks like when it's all set up. You say you can angle it any angle you want. Yeah, it's a really good screwdriver. And so I do like that set. It's just a shame that I've lost some of the screwdrivers on that bit there. But yeah, I still use that. Would recommend that. Just a few mentions of what I keep in my pockets and that. So this is the Unionite neck light. You've probably seen this on some of my videos. Yeah, that is really good. Wouldn't be without that now, Unionite neck light. Nothing keeping our pocket, a fuse puller. So that'll just help pull out fuses, keep that in our pocket. Tracer pencil, so that hooks in our pocket, really good to have as well. And last but not least, the light folding pen. That's really good to say, it's got a torch on the front, torch on the back, and enough torch there. Magnetic base, and so that just clips onto our trousers, I'm going to say, probably seen that some of our videos as well. But yeah, there were some other things that we keep as well. So if you're going to ask me to pick out four of my favourite tools, it'd have to be the Unlight Neck Light. Really good. Love that. The oil filter wrench. Such a good idea. Compression spanner. Again, just makes my life easier to tighten up nuts. And my big pair of Nipex grips. Really like them. So yeah, them are my four favourite tools in my tool bag. So there we go. That is the Velocity Rogue 9.0 bag with all my tools in it, but am I missing anything? If there's any tools that you think I should have in there, let me know in the comments. Yes, I know I need some long screwdrivers. I am gonna get myself some. So I really hope that's helped you out. I have got a monument sweat box well for my soldering gear and stuff like that in. If you wanna see a video on that, let me know in the comments. If you're interested in any of the tools, they are, there is links in my Amazon shop. There's a link in the description, link in the comments. Not saying you have to buy from there, I'm really not. Shop around, get a good price, but some of the tools that go in there, like the all filter range, the Weaver, the Allen Key set, the Monument compression spanner, I got all them from Amazon, so I'll put the links in there to try and help you out. Any questions, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. See you on the next one.